Welcome to the morning show here on Arise News. It's a happy new year and yes, welcome to year 2020. Happy, happy new year. year. <laughs> happy yes, happy we're excited year. to be here. Yes, I'm Shaitan Atigari. I'm Rafa Yosini. And I'm Kachi Ofia. So let's get right into it. For most people, the new year promises to be very interesting with new visions and missions. This is one thing to make a resolution and another to sustain it. And that is why projection plans are very important as we begin the new year. So joining us now is Chinedu Makiti Diego, a human potential maximization expert with competencies in succession planning, training, coaching, organizational development and performance and expatriate management. She's also a member of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management, CIPM, and Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM. Uh, great to have you. Great to have you. Uh, on the show. this morning. Let's just great quickly go on. straight to it. Uh, it's the very first day of the brand new year, not a decade, mm -hmm. 2020 starts today. What, why is there a need for a projection plan as we get into 2020 and another decade? Okay, so without being cliche, if you fail to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm. So um, if we definitely want to make 2020 the year, mm. then we definitely have to make projections. We have to sit down and plan. If we don't, then definitely it will be like any other year. Mm -hmm. And it will be all the things you didn't dream. <laughs> why, why are we always yeah. having this concept of it's going to be the year, it's going to be my year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, doesn't it just jinx everything for you in the first yeah. place? Doesn't it put a lot of pressure on you? Okay, so yesterday, just fun fact, I um, Googled how many days I've spent on the, on the earth so far. Apparently, it's 15,000. 300 and something days. Wow. <laughs> so if I get to leave another times two, I'll be 84. Mm -hmm. Now, the average age of the average Nigerian female that dies mm -hmm. is at least, I think, about 47 now. Mm -hmm. wow. and, and the average male is like 43. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. So if we're going to spend any time upon the face of the earth, and we don't know when we will go. Mm -hmm. I know some people say they want to leave 100. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I it, don't so, I mean, it's. I, like to. I, I want mean, to live a little bit. Really? Okay, so have you taken a look at the 99 year olds today? You know what? I like the fact that you mentioned that because a lot of people, especially with this new year, are talking about planning the right way. Mm -hmm. For example, in your 20s, 30s, this is when you should be building. In your 50s, those things you've built should be working for you, not you working for them anymore, so that in your 90s, those things that have been working for you, you can begin to enjoy them. You're not struggling. So I'd also like to talk about the idea of planning. Now, this is 2020, and let's be honest, mm. a lot of people do not have even a jotter <laughs> <Yes>. or anything <laughs> laid out. So that concept of planning when the year arrives, at what point do we actually need to start planning? for the new year or for a new month? Is it just when it arrives or? Okay, I try to end my year in November. I try. Mm. Okay. This year it was about December 15th. The reason I do that is because I want to leave everybody behind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I think that you should take some time before the year and sit down and look. Okay, so what did I, what did I plan to achieve the year before? How did I do? Where did I fail? What lessons did I learn? Mm -hmm. And then what can I, how can I take that forward into the new year? Mm. OK, so um, some experts, I mean, they throw a number of figures at us. 12 key things to look out for, eight, five, yeah. three. <laughs> this year, I've settled for three. <laughs> yeah. And it's wealth, yeah. health, and fitness. And um, the third one is relationships mm. with God, and man. Mm -hmm. Those those three. I'm not working beyond those three this year. Now the reason for me is simple. Every other thing, so if you want to break it down to careers, it's tied to your wealth. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so your health and fitness is tied to fun and you know, so I, I feel like the three, you know, it's just, just works. Now the thing with most people is that they set too many in too many areas. <sighs> And then they start to do things that are not normal for them anyway. And then maybe on the 10th day, <laughs> <It's like laughs> they no give up. <laughs> I, have, I have two questions for you. First okay. off, you said something very interesting. You spoke about how you end your year in November. And I feel that even though we set New Year resolutions, one of the most important things is actually evaluating the goals that we had set in the past. So I want to ask you this. What, what's that process like? How important should that be in planning your New Year resolutions? And also, because this is what you do, what is one of the most difficult things that people um, face when putting their New Year, New Year resolutions together? 
Okay, so I, I, I like to say I don't do New Year res resolutions. I just set goals. <laughs> just <set the> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the year, you know how, okay, so there's an Igbo saying, when a man wakes up, that's his morning. Yeah. So You're if right. you sleep through the year, if you wake up every day, then fantastic. So, so you, you say, what should the process be like? I think the process should be tied to who you are. So people like to do stuff on their phone. I like my good old Jota. Yes. Yeah. Highly effective. Okay. <laughs> and something else um, that a lot of people fail to do, they write it and they lock it up in that jota. You need to put it where you can see it. Mm. Put it in um, as many, you know, scripture says, um, write the vision. Mm -hmm. that is he, yes, that he may run that sees it. And that he is you, whoever is important to you. So the key thing for me is, first and foremost, you must write it in such a way that it's inspirational for you. Yeah. It's not somebody else's goal. Mm. Because your mother might want you to lose weight, but you don't. Your husband <laughs> might want you to, you know? So, but it's not key to you. Then it's not inspirational. So I, I have this new acronym I've added to my own SMART goals. I call it iSMART. And so the I is for inspirational. Make the goal inspirational. Sit down and think it through. What would I achieve? What would I do that would really move me, you know, from point A to, to point B. B. In 2017, for me, it was if I wrote a book. Okay. Yes. And so I wrote the book, The Core. Mm. As I was writing it, I wrote another one. So the thing about, write, about you know, doing this goal thing is sometimes people say, oh, what if I don't achieve it? What if you do? Exactly. That's another one. Mm. And like actually, that. writing down those goals actually increases the possibility of your achieving them. I, In some studies, by as much as 80%. Wow. I'm like, ah. Oh, was not to love. There's, there's a knock on reaction, and uh, you might not believe in cosmic galaxies and the likes, but once you say it out, things just come in place. I mean, I, I remember when you, you talked about a book, I mean, I think many years ago, close to 10 years ago, I, I made a personal projection that I was going to write a book every year, and we've done nine down the line. Wow. Not a one is coming out this year. Interesting. And, and you know why? Because once you just say it, yeah. It's as if it goes into the atmosphere and things start to work around it happening. I mean, Very I true. once read a book that changed my life, Rhonda Bynes, The Secret. Oh, fantastic book. Once you just put it out yes. there. I yeah. promised myself to, you yeah. know, it goes on and you on. Get, and once on you on. put it out there, it just happens. Yeah. So how about, and, and I want you to speak through this, intentional sayings. Mm. You know, if you're religious, they'll say it's prophetic declaration. Mm. But if you believe in the way the world works, intentional sayings. I want you to talk us through that in the course of this new year. Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you write down goals that are inspirational for you, that you believe, I believe that as you put it out there, ideas will come to you. People will come to your mind when to you speak to. There. Just on your, first on your paper, and then you speak to somebody else who... I like to call them accountability partners. Okay. Somebody who will push you on the days you don't feel like doing those things, okay? And I, I believe that as you think about it, as you express the desire, ideas will come to your mind. Mm -hmm. People will come to you. Opportunities, I mean, it's interesting how I'm on this show this morning. <laughs> I didn't plan to be on it. Yeah. You know, and um, I've been saying, I've been in the past 90 days, I've been talking about ending your year well so that you can start, it, start, start the new one well, you know? And, and, and it's interesting. So one of my goals this year is I will write three books this year. Mm -hmm. So how will I do it, seeing that I have a day job, mm -hmm. you know? So the thing is, as you, as you say, oh, I'm going to, you, so the thing with goals is people say, oh, I will, uh, I, I'm, go, I'm going to have it. No, 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 say it in the form of it has already happened. I have. Yes. I understand. It's 2020, March 30th, and I am 75 kg. Yeah. Okay. I look amazing. I fit into this size, whatever Just dress. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, feel the feelings of it. Experience yeah. the experience. Mm -hmm. Now, people say that this is mumbo jumbo. I say, no, it's locked into the way the world works. Wow. Locked into how God made the world. Yeah. So. In the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, mm -hmm. everything. So everything you desire, some people say, what if I say it and somebody steals it? There are many more where that came exactly. from. Exactly. Many more. You didn't bring it up. 
many more. I'm never afraid of people stealing my ideas. Mm. I didn't give it to myself. Yep. A higher power, a bigger person gave it to me. More coming. More ideas will come. Yeah. Now, I think one thing that I feel worked for me was when I started writing, I noticed that I, I, I really just like jotters and they're very cute. So I'll exactly. switch jotters. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I could go through like 15 of them. <laughs> in all of them. Yeah, I was yes, me. I am. <laughs> But one thing I noticed worked for me right from 2017 was I would go through magazines and I would see things that I want to do and I would cut out pictures mm, and I'll just paste board. them on the wall, mm. vision boards. Yeah. Now, everyone has that strategy that they use. For me, that is more specific than starting to write details. So I want to talk about the way to write goals. Is it realistic to say, in 2020, I want to make 15 million naira? If you didn't make 10 last year, highly unlikely you will make 15 Why? this year. Why? Well, it's a goal. I believe it. Okay, I'm so, saying so, it. So, yeah. so, the, so the thing with belief is if something is too far for you, yeah. You really don't believe it. You'll find that even when you're trying to say, you will sick. <laughs> there will be no confidence. I've met some people. You, there are some people you can't convince them. It's it's right, it's 100 million. I haven't seen 1 million in my life, 100 million. So I, I think, you know, what it is here is also about being realistic with your goals. Yeah. Because I could come and say, you know what, I want to be, I want to have uh, what, uh, a size. <laughs> for but you know I want to be able to fit and say size four dress by next year uh, by next, next month. month. But I'm not, am I actually doing the work? Am I because I, that, that's even my next question to you. It's one thing you said you know talking about this, but then the actual implementation of those goals, making sure that you, like you said having an accountability partner. One of the things uh, according to statistics, one of the things that make people fall off the wagon, the bandwagon of New Year resolutions, that true procrastination. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Because it's something that a lot of you know, people deal, uh, kind of suffer from, saying, oh, I, I, I'm going to, like you just said, instead of, saying, instead of saying that you need to kind of make it in the present, how do you deal with procrastination? OK, so two things. There, there are many reasons why people procrastinate. The primary reason is that that goal is not theirs. So say, for example, and women do this a lot, I want my husband to love me or something more or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can't set a goal that is in somebody's hand. You can't make your husband love you. Okay. You can only do things that, you know, <laughs> when you set your goal, make sure there are things that you have responsibility for. Mm. So that way you can say, so for example, with losing weight, you cannot guarantee that when you climb on the scale today, you'll be five kg less. But if you exercise daily, you eat the right portions, drink enough water, sleep well, then most likely you will be going in the right direction. So for procrastination, decide if that goal is truly yours. And if it's not, throw it out of the window. OK, I'm going to just come in here because we're going on a quick break. Okay. Um, we're still watching The Morning Show. Stay with us. Right, welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The first day of the new year, yeah. 2020, yeah. we're all yeah. excited, but we're talking about projection plan for the new year. So let me start by disagreeing. <laughs> I want to disagree. And you said somebody says, uh, I, I'm currently make 10 million, I want to make 30 million in the next year, it's almost impossible. I say it's possible. And why do I say so? Because really, you talked about three cardinal points, wealth and um, health oh, and relationship. And relationship. The basis for wealth, really, is a mixture of resource and resourcefulness. And when I set those top projections for myself, that was what I did. I started harnessing my resource, and I added my capacity to be resourceful with it. And it was astronomical what I made by a factorial of three or four. So shouldn't that be the right message we're putting in the week rather than saying, oh, it's not possible because some people say that God go dwell. I'm not saying that God go dwell. Okay. I'm saying resource and resourcefulness. Okay, so the reality is upon the face of the earth, you can do absolutely anything. Oh, yes. Anything. Yes. As in truly anything. Yes. You know, before the Wright brothers flew, yes. scientists of the day, the people with PhD in and fact, experts say it cannot in be fact, done. Let me shock you. The Association of American Engineers came out with a statement as at 1900 know. that nothing made of metal can fly in the air. Two bicycle repairers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, expertise. without expertise, flew the first so, plane in Kitty Hawk, North so, Carolina. So in reality, there's almost nothing impossible. 
But why I put out that caveat is because the average Nigerian who is saying, I want to be a trillionaire today, has no plan but God will do it. And you see, it's true, God will do it, but he requires you. And if you have not put down that plan on paper and figured out, started, you know, the thing is, with, with, you may not know the whole thing. It's just like if you're driving at night. You will not be able to see past five kilometers. You, not even up to. But as you move further, the, you know, the space opens up. So, yes, you can set astronomical things, but then you must be willing to do astronomical things as well. I'm sure that year you went far and above your usual. I stretched myself. I knocked on doors. So the thing is, how many people are willing to go far and above? And that really is where the crux lies. Okay. So if you want astronomical goals, you better go be ready to do it. Better be astronomical <laughs> as well. Now, let's look at, you know, something that happens a lot, not just 2019 through the years. There's been the issue of unemployment in Nigeria. Oh. And looking at the economic projections for 2020, it doesn't look like it's going to get better. I mean, we hope it gets better. There are so many things that are being brought up that in the next five years, possibly could actually alleviate the amount of unemployment in Nigeria. But let's bring it home now to our personal lives. As individuals, as Nigerians, let's assume that, you know what? Let's keep the government aside for a second. What am I doing wrong? Is there anything I can do to make my life better? Is there anything I can do to gain experience, gain the expertise? I mean, there are people doing it. There are some people that are not dependent on the government. So why is my own different? There are some people that even come from great homes, but they're still doing OK. Yeah. Why is mine different? What can we do better in 2020 as individuals? I think you've touched something that's very dear to my heart, unemployment. Now, the reality is that unemployment is not far removed from the economy. Yeah. So if the economy is striving, there will be jobs. Yeah. So when there are no jobs, the economy is not working. Of and why is the economy no, not working? Just take a look at all of us here. How many of us are wearing made in Nigeria things? I am actually. Well, <laughs> no, 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 wait. No, 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 wait. When you say <laughs> you are, yes. the fabric is not made in Nigeria. Well, let's talk it's about imported. No, no, so, no, no, yes. no, no, no. I'm just you saying. Want to wear. I'm just know, you want wear. You know why I'm cutting you off there? Mm -hmm. Because we say that. Let's buy the Naira to grow the Naira. Let's wear made in Nigeria. But let's be honest, how many designers within Nigeria are doing great and are affordable at the same time? Uh, there are people who make great stuff, great blazers. But I have some Nigerian made blazers and I have some foreign made blazers. And I'll be honest with you and to tell you that the clear. difference is clear. There are some people that actually go all the way to so, sew, but can I? promise you that you have more people making great clothes in Nigeria that are not even sewing in Nigeria. So it's all about the quality. You can't convince people to buy something that isn't quality. Okay, so let's not get distracted mm -hmm. by the made in Nigeria, not exactly. made in Nigeria. <laughs> However, the point is not so much as to are we wearing made in Nigeria. The point is, are we conscious of the fact that our purchases make the difference to the economy? Yeah. So when we shout Buhari, just check, you know, each time I go grocery shopping, I try to check how many made in Nigeria things are here. Mm. And you'll be shocked. They're quite, I mean, so the other day, I like almonds. So I bought almonds, one small packet for 2,000 something. If the lady who sold ground nuts was selling me past 500, I would have a good fight. So the question is, why is it so easy for us to buy foreign? And pay higher. It seems that comes from a place of the orientation of Nigerians. True. So how do we... So, so the point for me is to be conscious of it. Okay. So we won't lose it all in one day, but just be conscious. Okay, when I spend, how do I, how does my spend go? Yes, yeah, you know, so if you look at the economy, the most, the things that trend in is mostly buying and selling, and that yeah. cannot build any economy. So in looking, so I mean, most people's New Year resolutions, new goals is they're looking for jobs. Yeah. So I always say, okay, fine, it's okay to look for a job, but if you really, if you really, if you really want to move the needle, think about being an employer of labor. Mm -hmm. Think about it hard because the reality is that we we flush out. I use the word flush. Excuse me. Thousands, tens, and thousands of graduates every year. Now, whilst we will pray and God will be magnificent, he will be generous, he will be kind, and about 10 to 20% of us will get jobs, a lot of us won't. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, if you then don't get a job, and you stay in that realm, and you beg, which is what a lot of Nigerians do, or prostitute, or whatever, the thing is, your, 
the small capacity you came no, out. Some Nigerians. <laughs> Not okay. a lot of Nigerians. Oh, oh, okay, some. I beg to differ. <laughs> okay, Nigerians fine. Nigerians are hardworking people. No, they're we, entrepreneurial. We, we, I beg to differ. We are truly hardworking. Some Nigerians, <laughs> okay. some little okay. fraction of the nation who do. Okay. Not, not everyone. Okay. Not prostitute. I mean, women are way too honorable in Nigeria than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they, they don't do, fine, but, but a lot yeah. of people do. And the question is, in that move, so I mean, anyway. Uh, let me not distract myself. <laughs> so, in 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 setting um, economic goals, be deliberate about buying Nigeria, investing what if Nigeria. What I don't have the money, Seth, to buy? How do <sighs> I do that? Because a lot. Of, let's understand that January is like three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say ninety nine days. <laughs> January is a long month. Some people don't even have the money, and that is what really worries me because it's like, we let's try something different. I want to know, like, what. what do we need to volunteer more? Do we need to, is it the experience we're lacking? Do we need to start going to every organization and just saying, look, I, don't, I know you don't have anything, but let me just do something. I just want to go out every day. Okay, so when I realized the unemployment problem was serious was when um, I was working in Maersk and we were looking for 10 people. And believe me, I think we, the process was close to 10,000 that we tested and what, what, what. And guess what, we didn't get 10. So the, we got nine. So the thing is, so people say there are no jobs, and there are jobs. Mm. The skills for those jobs, people are not meeting. Mm. Then again, so, so the question is, so you say you don't have, say, so you say you don't have resources, but you need to be building. You see that phone that you have on your hand? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an amazing tool. tool. Yeah. There's so many things, so many things to learn in YouTube. My boss forced me to do uh, Microsoft Word and no Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint training this last week, and I was offended. But guess what? I, the things I learned, I, I was like, amazing, amazing things I've, I, I could spend hours doing that really were just a button away. Mm -hmm. You know, so even if it's the current thing you're doing, make it better. I find that very few of us really are interested in making things better. And that's the one space I find that um, foreigners do better, just a little bit better. Let's talk a little bit about the skills gap, because you're quite, you're quite very right. I mean, one thing I'll agree with you on is the fact that there are a lot of jobs. Funny enough, uh, you might say there are not enough jobs. There are jobs. I'm not going to say there are enough jobs. There are jobs. But the skills gap is still a big problem. And it even goes back to the universities. How are they you know, equipping students with the skills of today? And at the same time, apart from even the universities, how are students of today going to get the skills needed for the future? So what will be the top tip or on the kind of skills you should get as you make your projections for the new year? You talked about you know, Microsoft appreciation programs. That's true. Excel, PowerPoint, because those are the things you work on these Weird. days. Yeah. You work th with those things these days. That's one of them. Are there other skills? Skills like as things as little as coding as things as anal data analytics. I mean, those are the jobs available today. Can you just talk about some of those skills even more? Okay, so with skills, um, sadly, um, most Nigerian universities are at least 10 to 20 years behind. behind. That's, that's the reality. So if you're a student today, you can't just say, oh, I, passing my exams is all that is important. No, it cannot be. And I think that God has been gracious because he's given us the internet. Because there's so many skills that you can learn off the internet. Okay, so just simple things, for example, like presentation skills. Mm. You know, um, if you're looking for a job, be deliberate about improving that. Be deliberate about reading and expanding your, your knowledge and your horizon. Yes, you can't know everything, but at least know everything that's connected with what you do. And be deliberate about building it. So for example, some people have worked in the same space for five years. No promotion, no salaries, and no salary increases, and they're happy. Or if they're not happy, they've not, not done anything about it. So the thing is not about your boss or your... So remember what I said about goals. It's not about things that other people control. You can't control... If your boss will not train you, you train yourself. Yeah. So in 2019, I had this goal, I want to be on boards. And Wimbis came up with a green board training. And I said I wanted to go on it. And my boss said she couldn't see the link. I said, it's my personal goal. And she said, I said, OK, would you give me time off? And then she gives me time off. I pay for it with my own money. 
Very few people pay for their own training. They say, ah, oh, they should train me. Guess what? You are your greatest resource. Make sure you do all you can to be the most profitable version of you. Of yourself. Yeah. Be the best version of yourself consistently. That's very apt. And, and, and that's very apt. And it, it is going to be a lot of trainings and personal development yeah. and taking yourself, you know, by account and being your own self's accountability partner. Because what will set you apart in the new year is your capacity to gain new skills. Skills is the only thing we trade in the marketplace for the substance called money. Skill is the value we trade for the substance called money. Let me just tweak that a bit. So it's not just general skills. Yeah. I think that one of the greatest gifts everybody can give themselves, and if you have children, give it to your ch children, is to discover your purpose early. And then build your skills, your gifts in that direction. We need to go. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs>